A um, couple of questions before we get started. Um, raise your hand if you've, lost, if you've lost key talent in the last three months. Anybody leaving your business that you wish would have stayed? Yeah? <laughs> Everybody's like, <"Ooh." laughs> Yeah. Uh, raise your hand if uh, you have difficulties to attract the right talent in your business. Okay. And last one. Raise your hand if you feel you do not get the right benefits out of your training programs. You have training programs. Okay. Well, you're in the right room. Okay. Um, this morning we had, we had uh, a really interesting presentation from uh, Guy Courtin. And you, you guys have seen this on digital transformation? He set uh, the scene perfectly so for some of the things we're going to be going through, uh, especially the background and the scene setting uh, slides that I'm going to show now. Okay. Uh, why is it that we have to take care of talent management in a different way in today's world? Well, one of the big elements is globalization. Okay, wow. Well, it's not really new, right? I mean, we've been talking about globalization for let's say, okay, 15, 20, maybe 25 years-ish, something like that, okay? We've discovered we can source stuff from far away. There are new uh, sourcing pools. There are new talent pools. And we start to move goods all around the planet at the, light, at the speed of light, okay? Well, this is not new. Uh, but what's new is what's going on all around these globalization things, okay? Things like, especially today, in the last coming months, we see a few things happening that are threatening the way we manage globalization. Okay? Things like, to name a few, Brexit, okay? or regulations, or the new president of the United States saying he's going to raise uh, and put custom barriers and raise the tax on any product coming into the US by 20% or whatever. That's the kind of things that happen today. Okay? So, there's no doubt that our supply chains now are more and more global, okay? Uh, but it's not globalization in a way we used to talk about it three, four, five years ago, okay? The world is changing again and will continue to change, okay? Uh, the next element that I want to talk about, we've been talking about during the whole day, basically, and we have a whole group of technology providers in the booth here and probably around the table. Okay, trying to sell all this great technology to us. Okay, so all of that technology is available to us as supply chain managers. Okay, to manage end-to-end -end supply chains, and the kind of things we can do now, if you compare that to the kind of things we were able to do with technology two, three years ago, or even ten years ago, is just incredible. Okay, you have all this new technology available, and. Um, I have a feeling that we can only use a small portion of that, and we don't, we don't use all of that fully, okay? And we're gonna see that has an impact on, on talent management, okay? So technology is here and, 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 uh, and fast moving, okay? Uh, the other element, which is slightly new compared to the other two elements, is uh, the new talent pools, okay? If you guys have heard about millenniums and the Gen Y and the Gen X and, and all of that kind of things, you know what I'm talking about, okay? We have new talent pools, whether they are new in terms of geography, like new people in areas of the world that we can tap into and, and bring talent from, okay? But there are also new talent pool in the form of new ways of working, new types of people, okay? Uh, that we can hire, develop, grow, etc. Okay. So as just, I just want to set the scene here with a couple of elements around uh, the world uh, we live in. Okay. So what are the consequences of those elements? Globalization, technology, and new talent pools. Uh, the first one is uh, our supply chains are more and more complex. Okay. Uh, they are extended. Uh, lengthy, uh, the logistics around the world is, is just going crazy. The amount of goods we're moving 
around the planet is booming. Okay? Uh, data management is an interesting point here. Okay? Uh, we hear a lot of those solution providers telling us all the great things that those um, softwares can do. Uh, now, there are prerequisites to be able to do this kind of things in terms of master data management and how you structure your data and how you are able to analyze this data, etc. Okay? The more, as we speak, you know, the number of data available around the planet is increasing. Okay? And the need for structured data and, and data analysts, etc., is increasing. Uh, risk management is another one. Okay? With globalization, um, uh, the types of risks we have to manage within our businesses is, is also getting uh, higher and higher. And different kinds of risks, whether they are uh, politic, uh, uh, political risks, uh, things around um, corporate social responsibility, uh, environmental, um, uh, weather catastrophes, and things like that. Okay? So supply chains are getting more complex. Uh, there is also, uh, without a doubt, uh, a trend uh, with regard to the scope uh, and, and the span of control, as Gartner would put it, of uh, supply chain management. Okay? 30 years ago, I don't even know if supply chain management, if the terminology exists, but that was like logistics. Okay? Uh, and now, and, and in the last 10 to 15 years, with globalization, technology, et cetera, uh, supply chain expanded to planning, scheduling, inventory management, logistics, and now you see more and more uh, the scope and the areas that are under supply chain management growing, growing, growing every day. The more advanced businesses, the ones that are in the top 20, Gartner, uh, et cetera, uh, you have the, the scope of supply chain management includes new product introduction, it includes operations, uh, quality management, uh, CSR, risk management, uh, obviously uh, purchasing and procurement, all those kind of things. Okay? So the scope of supply chain management grows. Okay? With that, uh, the types of people we need also evolves. Okay? Um, a couple of years back, uh, you could do very well with experts in their fields. Okay? So uh, what I call the eye-shaped people, okay? So people that are really into their fields and they are the experts, like the top guys doing a proc a purchasing and procurement, experts in sourcing and managing supplier contracts, etc. Experts in logistics, okay? There are experts in managing, you know, the flows, internal flows, managing the carriers, the three PLs, uh, etc. Okay? Experts in demand planning, okay? Now, more and more, with the expanding scope of supply chain management, not only you need those eye-shaped people that are really good at what they do in their area of expertise, but you also need the T-shaped people, people that are able to understand how these end-to-end -end processes work and orchestrate all of that and make sure all those experts work in sync, uh, et cetera, and, and talk to each other, uh, follow their process, and with good communication all around. Okay? So extended span of control means uh, different kinds of people and new types of people. Uh, there are also new requirements in terms of uh, competencies and skills. Okay? Uh, I talked about the new talent pool. Um, the type of elements that are going to make jobs in your business attractive to millennials are not the same elements that you, <laughs> you guys, yeah, that probably you guys are interested in, okay? They are interested in new kinds of things. They are expecting different kinds of things out of their job, okay? And the companies they work for, they look for different things, okay? Uh, and also the technology element that I mentioned before uh, is driving uh, the necessity for new types of skills, okay? When you talk about big data, control towers, Internet of Things, etc., uh, you're going to need people that are able to manage all this data. You need uh, analytical skills, uh, data scientists, um, people that know how to manage complex algorithms, these kind of things. I mean, 10 years ago, we didn't need that in, in the supply chain function. 
Okay? Maybe you had a couple of people here and there. Now you need, depending on the size of your business, uh, dozens or hundreds of these types of people. Okay? And uh, the sad news is um, these types of skills are pretty rare okay, across the batch. So all of that together uh, is making me say that in terms of supply chain talent management, uh, we are at a time of a perfect storm. Okay? The requirements we have, okay, this demand we have, and the resources that are available in the market uh, makes it very difficult for everybody to attract and retain people. Okay? So with that, what do we do? Okay? Well, the first thing you guys need to do is take the lead, okay? How many of you guys, raise your hand if you are supply chain professionals, okay? Uh, so you guys are the right people and you should be leading those business processes, how to manage talent within your business, okay? Don't let HR do that for you, okay? If you think HR is gonna do it for you, <laughs> you have a big problem, okay? They are not going to do that for you. Okay, HR is here to provide a framework, a set of tools, processes, and policies, okay? But they are not going to drive talent management for you, okay? You, the functional leaders, should do that, okay? Advice number one. Uh, number two, uh, define a structured approach, okay? Uh, and I will take you through a, a very simple complex, uh, a uh, very simple uh, process that I call uh, integrated uh, talent planning, okay? Just like IBP, but for the people, okay? So I'll take you through that, some of the things you can do, but follow a structured process, okay? Take the lead and define those steps. I'll show you an example of that, and you can customize that depending on your needs, etc. But I'll show you a couple of things and, and what good looks like, okay? Uh, so... So here is the introduction of, of that very simple concept, which I, I'm calling uh, integrated talent planning. Um, if you guys have attended also that session with, uh, what is his name, um, Chris Turner, he mentioned several times the world strategy and how everything you do within the business should start with proper strategy. Where do we want to be in five years time, 10 years time, okay? Uh, integrated talent planning starts also with strategy. Okay, this is where you should start. So if your business is here today and you want to be here in five years time, okay, start from there and then look at what, are, what is going to be the impact of your strategy on your current talent pool. Okay, so start with the strategy, uh, link your talent management process to the strategy. That's gonna give you also strengths Okay, to go to back to executives, to HR, etc., to launch initiatives and do things. Okay, because you can say, well, we should do this because our strategic objective is to be there. Okay, so start with the strategy. Uh, another key element is a competency model. How many of you guys are, do have a competency model for supply chain? That's quite good. That's quite good, okay. Uh, so that's a very important element, okay. Because this competency model, you're gonna be able to use and articulate all kinds of sub-processes that I'm gonna go around, for, okay. So if you don't have that, uh, just build one, okay. And if you have one, review this on a frequent basis, okay. The competency model you need to deliver your strategy in five years time is probably not the competency model you need now, okay? You're gonna have new skills, new competencies that you're gonna need, et cetera, okay? So it's not about what you need now, but what you're gonna need in five or 10 years time, okay? Uh, obviously, with the competency uh, model, you can start doing competency assessments, which is basically, okay, these are the people in those roles. We expect that if you are in this role, in the supply chain management function, you should have this level for each of those competencies. Are we there or are we not there? Okay. Do the people 
that currently run the business and the supply chain have the right level of competencies or not. Okay. Uh, you can also do, you probably also do a performance review. Okay. So how do people perform? Okay. You can have the great skills, but unfortunately uh, under deliver. Okay. That, that's possible. Okay. But uh, the right skills and the right results. Okay. Uh, this is all part of the gap analysis. Okay. Where do we have gaps uh, into our supply chain talent? What types of competencies do we need? What types of people do we need? Okay. Uh, a good way to summarize that is what I call talent review. Uh, that's one of the good things we've implemented at GKN. We have a, a yearly uh, functional talent review. Okay. So um, for those who don't know, uh, GKN is an engineering company. Uh, we run 150 manufacturing locations in 30 countries. Okay. Approximately 2,500 people work in supply chain, in supply chain roles. Okay. Uh, every year, all the businesses at their level review their supply chain talent, the competencies they have, the competencies they miss, how they train their people, uh, they look at um, succession planning, those kind of things. Okay. And we wrap this up, we aggregate this up, and I, 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 I'm presenting once a year to the CEO and the HRD of the business, the state of the nation. This is the strategy. This is where we are on talent. This is how we're going to close the gap. So uh, a good practice here is to run those talent reviews. Uh, we, do it, uh, we do it on a yearly basis at GKN. Uh, but if you don't do it, uh, I would strongly advise you to start doing these kind of things. Okay? Sum it up. Look at all the elements of talent management in a discipline um, structured review. Okay? Um, once you've identified the gaps, uh, that's the easy part. You need to look at closing those gaps. Okay. Yeah, sure. Ask questions anytime. Let's make that as interactive as possible. So one, one of the challenges that I had in two companies in, in, the, in that part is that the competency assessment turns a bit into number crunching. Um, when you, when you think of a global organization, then mm, mm, mm. it's a lot of data and there is PII questions and so on. Mm. I personally identify the information. And, and the other is that, it, in fact, it might be taken as, okay, am I on track for my career or not? So it's taken slightly in different ways. Yeah, you're right. Different functions, countries, and so on. You're right. It the purpose sometimes of actually gauging you're right. I think that's, that's one of the, the, this is a good example where you need HR support in terms of how do you set the scene for competency assessment? How do you communicate up front? Uh, as you mentioned, uh, you will have different reactions to competency assessments depending on the country you're in. Uh, some people are going to be scared and they're like, oh, you know, uh, oh, if I don't tick the right box, they're going to take me out or whatever. Or you can have people that say, uh, Oh, but uh, if I do, if my competency level is above, do I get a pay raise or whatever? So, I mean, uh, managing those competency assessments, um, set them properly, communicate upfront the, the purpose, okay, purpose is key here, explain why, okay, uh, is a key element. But as you rightly mentioned, uh, competency assessments are key uh, tools for career discussions, okay? When you think about having a career discussion with someone, say, okay, well, that's your current position. This is your current uh, competency level on those critical skills. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do next? Oh, you want to do that job. Okay. You want to be a VP supply chain of operations in Asia okay, in two years' time. Where, what are the gaps? This, these are the competencies expected for these types of jobs. Where are the gaps? How, do we gonna, how are we going to close the gaps? Okay. So the competency assessment is, should really be taken as, as uh, a screenshot of where the individuals are. Okay. And more importantly, uh, you have to work up front on gap closing stuff. Because as soon as you start making competency assessments, you're going you're gonna to highlight and identify gaps. Okay. So think up front how you're going to be closing those gaps, whether this is uh, training and development, special projects, exposure, 
you know, all kinds of different things that you can do. Okay. Um, so in terms of gap closing activities, uh, training and development is obviously an obvious one. Uh, it's, it's a key one. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about uh, how we do it at GKN so that I, we can share and you guys can ask questions. Uh, recruitment and onboarding, of course, if you miss critical competencies, you have to think about bringing uh, those skills from outside. Okay? So here, there's a whole suite of, of things in terms of uh, making your company and the jobs attractive, uh, making sure you pay the, the right salaries for the right jobs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to talk too much about that, uh, because actually, it's not something we're really good at. Okay? Uh, we're not good at all those stuff. We are on the journey. Uh, career path and succession. So we talked a little bit about that. Uh, competency model is, is quite important. Uh, succession planning also is quite important. Okay, um, and that's something we, we do pretty well within GKN in our yearly cycle. Uh, we identify for every role um, uh, the talent pool, okay? And for the talent pool and the potential successors, we assess whether they are ready now to take on the job, or they will be ready within, within one to three years, or within five years. Okay, so manage the talent pool, Manage the succession plan is quite key. Then that tells you where you're going to have gaps, okay? And it helps you to manage the risks, okay? Uh, compensation and benefits, uh, I've mentioned, okay? Uh, and, that's, and that's a tough one, this one. Um, if we go back to, um, excuse me. If we go back to my earlier comment on the expanding uh, span of control of supply chain management, um, you, you tend to have a little bit of tension in there because you have think people in the supply chain function that have more and more responsibilities and sometimes the wages don't follow, right? And you, you get out of sync with the market and those kind of things. Uh, also, um, not all executives and leaders and not all HR, uh, all your HR specialists understand what supply chain of the 21st century is, okay? So may, they may be a little bit biased and, and there may be misunderstanding in terms of what types of roles are now available on the market for talented supply chain professionals, okay? Even some recruiting firms I've came across are, have standards that are completely out of date, okay? So just be careful with that, you know? Um, Attract and retain is the whole purpose here, okay? Uh, how do you attract the right talent? And for the talent you have internally, how do you retain those guys? And all of these are tools to do that, okay? Grow them, grow those people, train them properly, provide the right packages, et cetera, et cetera, and career discussions, et cetera, okay? What questions do you have on that model? Mm. That's an interesting uh, question. Um, in, I, think, I think they get they get it fairly quickly when you compare to uh, all what I'm going to say older generations, um, because in the way they experiment, I was going to say life as consumers. <laughs> I mean, they understand uh, you know uh, how the consumer acts and, and, and how quickly they can leverage uh, digital, social media, and those kind of things. So they get, if, if, they, don't, if they don't understand fully uh, what supply chain is, they, they quickly get it. If you compare that to, um, uh, well, I'm going to say that differently. It's a lot easier to explain to a millennial what supply chain of the 21st century is than it is to teach to your top CEO or whatever, who is 65, okay? It's a lot tougher to t teach those guys and educate them and tell them, well, you know, <laughs> this is supply chain today because those guys have grown and they have been successful in a world where, you know, uh, supply chain was not what it is today. I think they get it fairly quickly. Uh, interestingly enough, um, we hire through graduate programs uh, at GKN uh, a lot of millennials 
uh, we've been hiring an, on average 12 to 15 uh, really top level graduates out of the best schools around the world, okay, for the last four or five years, mainly with engineering profiles, okay. We've decided to do that for, with, um, for a supply chain profile also. We're going to hire two or three a year now with supply chain profiles out of the best uh, supply chain universities across the world. Uh, but interestingly enough, the guys we've hired two or three years ago with engineering backgrounds are now asking for supply chain placements. So those guys get it. They start to see, you know, uh, they start their, their working life. They work in engineering or manufacturing engineering, etc. cetera. Uh, and, and they realize, hmm, uh, maybe I should get some supply chain experience because this stuff is quite important. We start to see this within GKN. So my answer to your question is, I think they get it a lot quicker than, 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 than the rest of the population. Yeah. Okay, um, what do you do next? Well, uh, follow the process, right? <laughs> Just as simple as that. So uh, what's proven to be very successful at GKN in managing our supply chain talent is to follow that process, okay? And be disciplined about that. And get your supply chain leaders at the different levels to follow that, okay? Uh, so identify the gaps, close the gaps, et cetera, and do it again, okay? Uh, update your strategy, you might, you might do that on a yearly basis, run your review, uh, your talent review, uh, run this process, okay? One of the things we also do at GKN in terms of talent review, uh, I put together four years ago now, a supply chain talent board, okay? We meet on a quarterly basis. Uh, the people that are meeting here are um, supply chain directors or VPs from the different businesses, and they are HR partner in charge of the supply chain function. We meet on a quarterly basis, we go through announcements, vacancies, we see how we can move people around. We talk about our development program. We talked about uh, those uh, competency assessments, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, very, very interesting. And, uh, and people uh, get a lot out of this. And uh, we've, we've had some really good results in terms of improving the turnover, et cetera. Yep. So yep. this process is about building competencies for the future that will talk to the future millennials or kind of mm -hmm. population. And how, how is that uh, balanced within your talent review sessions? Because I guess you, you haven't got that population represented. That's true. That's true. Uh, good question. I think here you have to apply another supply chain principle, which is called segmentation. Okay. <laughs> Those guys do not have the same needs. Okay, and you cannot manage those guys in the same way, okay? Um, a, a production planner that's been with your business uh, at the same desk for the last 10 years and has only a couple of years to go before retirement, uh, you're not gonna do the same things to make sure he sticks around compared to a bright young star, uh, you know, sitting next to him, okay? So, mm, yeah, my answer here is apply segmentation. We, you're not gonna have, I mean, the same recipe is not going to work with the different populations, okay? Uh, that actually, uh, another element that I did not mention that's going to help you to do this segmentation is role profiles and HRMS. How many of you guys use HRMS? Human Resources Management System. Some kind of software, <laughs> okay, where <laughs> you have your role profiles, okay? the competency library, etc., and you match your people, real people, to the role profiles, okay? And when you do your supply chain, your talent review, you run reports and it gives you demographics, okay? How many people are production planners? So many, where are they? Oh, in Germany, in the US, in Mexico, in Japan. How old are they? This is the age profile. Uh, what's the succession, uh, succession profile for those guys? Are we green, red, amber? Okay, so um, use HRMS to map your people so that you have the right demographics, analyze the data, and then take the right action. So this, this is quite key to, to do that segmentation. The types of things we're gonna do is gonna be different depending on the talent pools, the age profiles, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, does that answer the question? Partially, yes, no? 
Well, there's a lot of independence into that, okay? It's yeah, people's stuff. There is a lot of stuff doing that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, it's a bit about how you define the process. Well, for me, that all starts with strategy, yeah. okay? I mean, when you say, I'm going to take an extreme case. Oh, we are a local uh, business. We manufacture bananas in the UK. And in five years' time, uh, we want to be manufacturing bananas uh, in Turkey, uh, in uh, Indonesia, and Japan. OK, great. That's a strategic objective. OK, it's going to have supply chain implications. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to run plants over there, blah, 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 blah. What does that mean on the competencies and skills you're going to need? Oh, you need, you're going to need people with cultural awareness of uh, Asia. You're going to need uh, people with specific language skills. Uh, you're going to need people that understand uh, customs management in India. Whatever. I mean, I don't know. So it's all start with a strategy. Where do you want to be in five years' time? Okay, how do you cascade that down into specific supply chain requirements? And the next level down, what does that mean for the type of people that are going to run that supply chain? Yeah? Good point. Yeah, uh, good question. Mm. This all happens uh, in the career path uh, discussion, okay, and in the talent review. For that certain population, you know you're going to have to have more frequent career discussions, okay, and you have to have you have to have a fast track uh, career path, okay. This goes. These guys want to explore lots of things in in, uh, in a quick amount of time. Uh, so this is how we do it at, at GKN. Um, but like I said earlier on, um, you cannot apply the same recipe uh, to the millennials or the, the, the early career guys. Um, but when you start having those reviews with HR specialists and, and supply chain uh, leaders, these kind of things are obvious because they oh, we've just lost that guy. Why? Oh, he says his career wasn't moving fast enough. Okay. So how many of these guys do we have? Oh, we have 25. What do they do? Oh, they do this and that and that. How long have they been in their jobs? Da, 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 da. And then you can take action. Yeah? There was a question here. Yeah, I had a question with regard to um, the outcome of your talent review, shall we say. Mm -hmm. So how well does that work at a global level when you involve relocation? Because for, for us, that was a massive problem. So I wouldn't say that we have um, the bestest model like that ever, but we started looking at competencies needed. We certainly have the performance review and we do talent reviews. Mm -hmm. But whenever we identified people that would be good, let's say, in a role in the US or somewhere which involved relocating people, that whole process fell down because of the obstacles with acquiring a visa in a timely fashion, immigration, the cost of relocation, blah, blah, blah. How well does that work in your company? Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's the honest answer. Okay. Because we are not as far down the line with this to come across these kind of things yet. Right. So I don't know. Okay. But that's, a, that's what I would temp be tempted to do is if you identify you're going to need specific competencies in one area of the world and you believe you're going to have to move or relocate things, I would tend to think you need to gather data in terms of uh, within your talent pool, who is ready to move and, uh, I don't know, move to Sweden or whatever, yes or no. Uh, how difficult is it going to be on a visa point of view, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I would probably anticipate those kind of things. It's a very good question. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know. You know, you identify mm -hmm. a person, you see, okay, there's a good opportunity, let's say in the US. Mm -hmm. Everyone agrees that's what we want to do. It's rare enough if you have a person that is quite happy to relocate the family and what have you. Yeah. And then it all falls down because it's not quick enough, you know, getting the visa and yeah, the yeah. permits, blah, blah, blah. There is no, authorities involved. You can't really push them much faster. And then in the end, it's like, you know what, it takes too long, it's too expensive. 
much better for us if we just go locally in the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone from outside. And then that whole model sort of falls down. Somebody's career perspective mm -mm. is not fulfilled and potentially they leave the US. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know, I don't have the silver bullet for that, but I can tell you that when you start having those discussions, you flush out those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And when you come across this, you can have a group of people thinking, how are we going to solve this? Okay, so um, I don't know. We did not come across that yet. But good, I will make a note of that. <laughs> you need to add to that. I yep. think this goes hand in hand with the supply chain hubs, if you think of it this way. So trying to run such a model on a local talent can become very difficult because you are restricted, essentially. Mm -hmm. And trying to move people from country to this country can be quite and land resources. But if you have, if you are hand in hand establishing those regional hubs or global hubs and so on, then this process can become much easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Um, okay, I mentioned that. So link your process to your yearly business cycle when you review your strategy, update whatever needs to be updated in the cycle. Uh, run a supply chain talent board, I've mentioned that, okay? Uh, do the executive review that I've mentioned before, uh, and think about current state, but more importantly, future requirements. I think I've mentioned all that. I'm going to move on quickly. Um, I just want to say a few words on supply chain training and development. Uh, how many of you guys are running supply chain trainings within your business? Okay. Uh, is that internal or external? Mm. Both, both, okay. Uh, one of the things we did at uh, GKN is to launch uh, an internal program, okay? We launched this in, in, in 2010, uh, and up to now, we've, we've, we've taken 700 people through that, okay? In, 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 uh, in different uh, workshops, uh, in different locations, we bring people to a GKN location, they fly over, we do those workshops and training and things like that, okay? We've been very successful with that, and I wanted to share a couple of, of elements uh, on this, okay? Uh, so that's the framework. The framework is intends that uh, providing training and development for everybody involved in supply chain management, okay? Whether you are at, at a site, a manager, or a VP, a director, etc. But not only the supply chain professionals, also the other leaders which are involved in supply chain management but are not supply chain professionals. I'm thinking the guy in commercial, in finance, in manufacturing engineering, those kind of guys. Okay, our plant directors, GMs, VPs, those kind of things. And we've developed uh, uh, different uh, training streams. Okay. Uh, and I want to talk about a few, few things that, that I believe we did well that made the, this program very successful. Uh, one of them is... Uh, clearly define who's your target audience, okay, and what gaps you're trying to fill. Through your demand, through your uh, talent review, what competency gaps you're trying to fill in, okay. Um, we try as much as we can uh, to include professional qualification uh, at the end of the programs, which is especially for the supply chain professionals, okay. If you're going to run, uh, be enrolled in the program, you go and take your professional qualification at the end, okay. So it's not only go there and do and learn the training, it's also you have to invest time personally to take the, the exam and, and be a qualified professional. Uh, leaders as teachers is something I really believe in. Okay? Any uh, training workshops that are delivered within GKN are co-delivered by an external expert, most of the time an EPICS instructor or something like that. And a senior supply chain person from GKN. Okay, I want all my VPs and directors to be able to teach supply chain. If you are a supply chain leader and you cannot teach supply chain, then we have a big problem. Okay? So leaders as teachers are very important. Okay? It's not only about theory, it's how we apply theory into the business. Okay? Um, homeworks and implementation projects, uh, when people are enrolled into this program, they have to come prepared. They have to read stuff, they have to prepare stuff, they have to do self-assessments before they come to the workshop, okay? And after the workshop, they have to implement what they've learned. When they get back to base, we track what they do, and they have to implement improvement projects. We track the outcomes of that, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, 
to do that properly, we've, we've, we're doing coaching and recognition, okay? So every supply chain professional entering the program has a, a functional coach, which is making sure um, the project is implemented and providing advice, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, we use business games. How many of you guys use business games in your trainings? That's pretty good practice, okay? Uh, do that, it's, it's really good fun. Uh, at GKN, we've been using the Fresh Connection for seven years now. I think we were one of the first uh, blue chip company to embed uh, this business game into our trainings. It's a good way to apply the learning in a non-threatening environment. It's fun, okay? And people learn a lot from it, yeah? Uh, and uh, get feedback. Get feedback from the participants on the quality of the training. But more importantly, get feedback from their managers. Ask their managers if the training had an impact on their performance, their behaviors, their engagement, et cetera, et cetera. These are some of the characteristics that I believe made this program very, very uh, popular within GKN. Uh, and we get, we get extremely good feedback, okay? <coughs> Is that it? A few pictures from some of our uh, training workshops at GKN. Yeah, sure. Uh, the business is paying for that. The divisions enroll their people. They have their own budget. Yeah. I charge Back. per head. Yeah. I manage that centrally, and I charge the business per head. They have to put that in their budget. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Actually, learning in role on the job and giving people critical experience for me plays a, a really fundamental part yep. in not only developing people, pushing them out of their comfort zones, enabling them to take safe risks. Yep. How have you managed to do that alongside this within GKS? Um, we do that in various ways, uh, but mainly through implementation projects and, and coaching. So, all of those guys are assigned with a functional coach who is able to coach them on the job, okay, and help them to make decisions, uh, manage some of the blockers, et cetera, and, and they make sure they are in an environment where they can deliver on their projects, their improvement, and apply the learning. We do that through functional coaching, basically. And how about where that, quite a lot of what you do in supply chain isn't supply chain. I would argue it's more generic skills. I yeah. No, but I think they are, you know. Hmm? I wouldn't say prioritization, for instance is a supply chain skill, it's a generic skill, but that does apply in the supply chain. Yeah. How do you, though, some of those, what I would say, are softer skills around um, where, where you take functional knowledge and then apply it. Good how point. Do you do, how do you... That's actually not within the supply chain program. This is in the leadership programs we deliver at GKN. So everything around leadership, communication skills, project management, etc., is in other programs. But I think it's a fair question. I mean, how do you make that work together? Okay. Okay. Wrap up. Quick wrap up. I'm, get, I'm running late. See <laughs> people. Okay. Uh, think strategy. Okay. It all starts with a strategy. Where do you want to be? Where do you want your business to be in five years' time? What does that mean for supply chain? What does that mean for your people? What's current state? What are the gaps? Etc. Okay. Uh, take the lead. I would never emphasize that uh, more. Uh, I mean, take the lead. Do not wait for HR to do that stuff for you. Okay. Uh, and finally, follow a structured approach. Okay. Define what it is. I showed you what it is we're doing at GKN. You can certainly use that, apply that, customize it, whatever works for you guys. Okay. What questions do you have? Oh, yeah, of course. That's true. That's true. There was a question here. Yes, I actually covered it at the beginning of the complaint, but um, with regards to re recruitment, do you have any key things you say have to be part of that process? Uh, I didn't mention a lot on that. Uh, I would say I talked about the role profiles. Mm -hmm. 
So make sure the whole profiles are for which you are advertising are the same that you use internally. <laughs> okay, <laughs> simple, but you know, um, describe very much what the roles are. I mean, people have different views on what supply chain is. People think it's only purchasing. People think it's only logistics. I mean, explain what the role is going to be. Um, talk about career, career path. I mean, if you enter with us in that role, these are the kind of things you should do later, etc. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, a good way to, to recruit good people is to run uh, graduate programs. We stop universities, okay, and nurture those guys into your business. Do you test anyone as part of your recruitment process? You bet. Yeah. I'm just going to give you an anecdote on that. Uh, every time I recruit uh, a supply chain professional, uh, pr uh, probably the third question is, uh, what can you tell me about MRP? Can you draw MRP too? If, those people, if the people in front of me cannot do that, it's a short interview. But we also do uh, tests, like basic knowledge and things like that. Yeah. 